Hi, this is Alison Hall and Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 134 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case in which uh, the dictum trust the knuckle is being examined. The patient had previous coronary bypass and presented with recurrent angina. He had a saphenous vein graft to the right coronary artery that had a recurrent failure. Four months prior, he had a drug eluting stent and anastomosis, and then one month prior to the current presentation, he had instant restenosis requiring laser and cutting balloon. He also had hypertension and diabetes. And this is a diagnostic angiogram showing that the saphenous vein graft has recurrent restenosis at the distal anastomosis, which actually extends into the native coronary artery. Given the multiple events and the multiple episodes of uh, saphenous vein graft failure with this complex uh, distal SVG lesion, the plan was uh, to recanalize the native uh, right coronary artery. We first uh, did balloon that instant restenotic lesion, and then this is an injection from the native coronary artery. There is diffuse disease in the proximal and mid right coronary artery with a blunt occlusion at the distal right coronary. This is a dual injection. Uh, the occlusion is about 30 to 40 millimeters long. There is a blunt proximal cap, but it's clear. And then the distal vessel is diffusely diseased, uh, proximal to the vein graft touchdown. Our plan was to try undergrade first, and uh, if that uh, did not work, then to go retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. We inserted a guide wire through the SVG for marking the distal to lumen position. And then did undergrade wire escalation. It was quite challenging. The support was poor. We did use an 8 French trap liner for extra support. And due to heavy calcification, we were unable to penetrate the proximal cap using a Horner 14 as well as a Gaia um, 3rd. We decided to go retrograde, but the challenge here was going retrograde through the SVG touchdown. And ways to do that is to use different wires with different bands, using angulated microcatheters, use the reversed guide wire technique, or use a deflection balloon to go around the band. And these are the three currently available angulated microcatheters in the United States. The Venture, in which the uh, turning the knob at the back end turns the tip. There is also the Supercross preform microcatheter with a 120 degree being the one most commonly used, and also the Swift Ninja. In this case, we did use a Supercross 120. It was still challenging going retrograde, but eventually we were able to make some progress using a Fielder FC polymer jacketed guide wire. Again, recurrent attempts, the guide wire is having a hard time making it to the right coronary artery. Um, but um, eventually, after multiple attempts, we were able to advance the wire. It does appear, however, that the retrograde wire is going into the subintimal plane. We persisted, we advanced a retrograde carrier microcatheter and used the Fielder XT to create a knuckle. And things were going okay, but then we noticed that the knuckle was actually veering off what we thought was the course of the vessel. Therefore, we decided to try undergrade again. Retrograde had not worked here. We did not have any of the other options. So using a dissection strategy, the move the cap strategy was the way to go. So we did the balloon assisted subintimal entry or base. We inflated a balloon proximal to the proximal cap, creating dissection and then advanced a polymer jacket wire through a dissection, and you can see now here that the wire is tracking and distally it is overlapping with the retrograde equipment. This is the undergrade knuckle, fairly large knuckle. We can see clearly here that the retrograde gear has gone in the wrong direction. We now have overlapping of the equipment distally of the both the undergrade and retrograde guide wire. And we try to do reverse cart using a balloon in the distal right coronary artery and using a Pilot 200 guide wire from the retrograde approach, it was able to advance. Here it's going up in the proximal right coronary artery, almost all the way to the trap liner that had been previously inserted. And then with more manipulations, we were finally able to advance the Pilot 200 into the undergrade trap liner 
and into the undergrade guide catheter. We then externalize the R350 and um, we inserted guide wires in both the posterolateral and the PDA, predilated the lesion. We still had the concerns previously about perforation and sure enough, what we have now is a perforation in the distal right coronary artery. What should be the next step here, and of course this is a bypass patient who have high risks of folliculated effusions that potentially can be lethal. The first step for any perforation is to inflate a balloon to occlude the vessel, and then for large vessel perforations, covered stents is usually the way to go, although sometimes prolonged balloon inflations can be used if uh, a covered stent cannot be delivered, or sometimes dissection techniques can be used. Here we did the balloon inflation, we tried for a while to advance a graft master covered stent. This was before the PK papyrus were available, but this could not be delivered. We did an emergency echo that did not show an effusion, but there's still uh, some extravasation in the distal right coronary artery. Eventually we decided to place a drug eluting stent. Now that's a controversial decision because sometimes placing a stent over an area of perforation can actually make the perforation worse. Here it did not, but there is still some extravasation. So we can see we still have some um, uh, extravasation and also on the lateral view there appears to be a perforation also in a small side branch. So it's not only the large vessel perforation here, but here it looks like we may have a perforation in a small vessel before. Now this could be into a cavity, but it's hard to know at this particular point. So we had more prolonged balloon inflations. We actually placed a more proximal drug eluting stent. That seemed to improve uh, both perforations. There was still a residual significant disease in the proximal right coronary artery that was successfully stented. And then after prolonged balloon inflations, there was essentially sealing of both perforations. We debated about occluding the saphenous vein graft. There was some flow, but not much competitive flow, and there was significant disease in the distal portion of the graft. Therefore, we decided to leave it alone, since we had a good undergrade flow into the right coronary artery and the right posterior lateral vessel. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that recanalizing the native is generally the preferred approach in patients with recurrent saphenous vein graft failure. Second, that the knuckle usually we trust, however in this case the knuckle went um, out of the vessel and probably this has to do with how the knuckle was initiated. We probably started the knuckle uh, in a branch and that's why the perforation occurred. Third, uh, perforations in bypass patients can be lethal and that's why they, can be treated, they should be treated as soon as possible. Cover stand is a therapy for perforations of the large vessel perforations. However, in this case, it could not be delivered. However, prolonged balloon inflations were performed and those were eventually successful in sealing the perforation. We did not reverse the endocoagulation here, which could lead to worse outcomes with thrombosis of the right coronary artery. And finally, in terms of um, a failing saphenous vein graft, sometimes those are coiled if they provide uh, large or significant competitive flow. In this particular case, there was no significant competitive flow and the vein graft was uh, significantly diseased. It had stenosed twice in the last two months. Therefore, no uh, occlusion was performed in the saphenous vein graft. Thank you.